Hey all, today we are going to discuss about Paget's disease. Paget's disease is also known as Paget's disease of bone and it is also known as Ostitis deformans. Hence the name suggests that it is a bone and joint disease. The name Ostitis deformans was given by Sir James Paget in 1877. It is basically a chronic progressive disease of bone. It affects our skeletal system, basically our bones. Most commonly middle aged and elderly patients are seen in Paget's disease. It affects uh, middle aged people or elderly patients or elderly people. It can be polyostotic or monoostotic but more commonly it is polyostotic. Commonly It is polyostotic and very rarely it is monoostotic. Monoostotic means affecting only single bone. It is also uh, called as disease of osteoclasts. Osteoclasts are bone resorbing cells, right? Now there are few characteristics of uh, Paget's disease as there is an um, imbalance between bone formation and bone resorption. Therefore, there is abnormal or excessive remodeling, remodeling of bone. Initially, there is increased osteoclastic activity, means increased resorption, increased resorption of bone. After that, there is an increased bone formation, which is abnormal, right? There is also increased vascularity of bone due to which the bone will be enlarged due to increased bone formation. The bone will be enlarged. It would be weakened because there is increased uh, porosities or uh, there is no rigidity in uh, these kinds of bone. right? And deformed with associated complications. Our uh, system gets in, has an increased sensitivity to such, uh, factors such as rankle, 1 to uh, 1,25 dihydroxy vitamin D, interleukin 6. These all the fa these all factors are uh, responsible for osteoclastic activities, or these factors enhances our um, osteoclastic activity of our bone. There is also an increase in the number of osteoblasts in pegetic bone basically. These osteoblasts are normal in nature. There is no uh, discrepancies are found in these osteoblasts. Therefore, the disease is known as, that's why the disease is known as disease of osteoclast because the osteoclasts are having abnormal form and they are responsible for excessive bone resorptions in our bones. The etiology of uh, pagetic uh, disease or Paget's disease is still unknown but there are some evidences that uh, some genetic links are there or viral etiology is there. Genetic links uh, such as PDB1 to PDB7 um, genes are there or viral etiology as there are nuclear inclusion bodies are seen in the cells Osteo osteoclastic cells maybe clinical features of paget's disease it is an disease of elderly as we know that so it uh, it is seen after 50 years of age very rarely it occurs below 20 years of age there is no gender predilection, but there is marked geographic predilection. It occurs in England, France, Germany, right? The disease is basically asymptomatic, though some patients show symptoms such as bone pain. Bone deformity will obviously there. Neurological, musculoskeletal and cardiovascular anomalies will be there. The disease affects axial skeletal more than the appendicular skeletal. The bones that are affected more commonly are pelvis, femur, spine, skull and tibia and to a lesser extent to the clavicles, upper extremities, ribs and scapula. The 
uh, weight bearing bones such as femur and tib tibia will be bored because of the lack of the rigidity to support the body weight the uh, bones the facial bones or the frontal bone there will be seen frontal bossing in such bones right so uh, three basic things will be seen signs and symptoms will be seen in the bones such as pain expansion and deformity thirdly platybasia will be seen as we know that the uh, cranial bones are uh, typically uh, softened at the base therefore these uh, ba so the bones such as occipital bone and the cervical spine will have a malformed relationship so there will be a malformed relationship between the cervical spine and occipital bone the skin over the affected bone will be warm because of the increased vascular because of increased vasculature blood vessels will be increased in uh, those areas right the secondary complications will be there such as headache paresthesia optic nerve atrophy cranial deficits facial palsy cvs anomalies will be there neuralgias will be there hearing loss now the oral manifestations of paget's disease as we know that it is a progressive disease so there is progressive enlargement of the jaws maxilla and mandible both are involved but maxilla is more commonly involved in paget's disease there is widening of the alveolar ridge there is flattening of the palate teeth may migrate the denture wearing patients will uh, complain of tightening of the dentures so you have to remade the dentures periodically mouth may remain open because the size of the uh, bones the uh, the size of the jaws are getting increased day by day so the lips are too small to cover the enlarged jaw so the mouth may remain open in chronic cases now the radiographic features of uh, paget's disease the paget's disease is having three phases that is the osteoclastic phase the mixed phase and the osteoblastic phase firstly the osteoclastic phase in which they, there is increased in the number of osteoclast and bone resorption takes place so radiolucent lesion will be seen in the osteoclastic phase secondly the mixed phase comes or arrives when there is both osteoblastic as well as osteoclastic blast and clast activities are there will be seen so there will the radiographic feature or radiographic appearance will be patchy or mixed radiolucency there will be a mixture of radiolucent and radio opaque right so the third phase is osteoblastic phase when there is increase in number of osteoblast or blastic activity is increased in this phase so it will give an uh, cotton wool appearance as there there will be a difference in the densities of bone formed there right now the isolated lesion in the skull will give a typical osteoporosis circumscripta appearance in radiographs so that kind of appearance is known as osteoporosis circumscripta when there is an isolated lesion in the skull other features like that are appreciated in the radiographic features such as cortical thickening increased num increased trabeculae bone enlargement and deformity bowing of bones uh, such as femur and tibia the uh, weight bearing bones will be bowed most importantly there is loss of lamina dura and there is generalized hypersymentosis of the teeth so there is hyper 
Now the lab findings of Paget's disease. There is an increased level of BSAP that is bone specific serum alkaline phosphatase. The level rises as high as up to 250 Budensky unit when there is an increased osteoblastic activity. Right. There is an increased level of hydroxyproline levels in the urine when there is an increased osteoclastic activity. The serum acid phosphatase level are uh, normal. The calcium and phosphate, uh, phosphorus levels are also normal. But the BSAP and hydroxyproline levels are increased. There is an increased uh, urine excretion of bone specific pyridinum collagen cross links NTX and CTX right the high alpha CTX to beta CTX ratio is increased but if uh, it is treated with bisphosphonates then it will be normal right now the histological features of Paget's disease the first phase is osteolytic phase so, as the name suggests, there will be an increase in the bone resorption process and there will be an increase in the number of osteoclasts. These osteoclasts which are found in this phase are abnormally larger than the normal osteoclasts and will have more than 100 nuclei. Right? The second phase is the osteoblastic phase which will give a typical jigsaw puzzle or mosaic pattern appearance and there will be an increase in the number of reversal lines or we will see reversal lines in this phase. Thirdly, the later osteoblastic phase. There will be an increase in the number of vasculature. So there will be a uh, highly vascularized fibrous tissue. There will be a bony islands which will be compact and marrow spaces are filled with highly vascularized fibrous tissue. And when the osteoblastic activity diminishes, it will give osteoporotic or burned out phase will predominate. Right. Then the treatment of Paget's disease. For bone pain, we will prescribe NSAIDs that is non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs such as aspirin and acetaminophen. And secondly, to inhibit the osteoclastic activity, bisphosphonates and calcitonin will be beneficial. So there are also complications of Paget's disease. First is stress fractures which occurs in uh, weight bearing bones such as femur. Most commonly femur is involved. Then uh, tibia, pelvis, spine are also involved. Then secondary sarcomas are also there after uh, this is one of the complications of uh, Paget's disease such as uh, chondrosarcomas and fibrosarcomas. Rarely osteosarcoma will occur.